everyone, my name is Deckerlink the Trained Unprofessional, and welcome to Angels with Scaly Wings! This is a game bought to me by, bought for me, I should say, by Base Knight. It is a game, <laughs> I've been trying to play this game forever, but I just never had the space in my schedule to do so, but finally, FINALLY, it happened! And all the things came together, all the right pieces fell into place, and now I am playing it! And I am so excited. It, from what I can tell, when you get the cursor here, like, get the mouse, I don't know if you can see it, uh, because of fraps. But the cursor is like a little crosshair, and there's like grid stuff. There was an intro playing, uh, earlier, but I was up changing, like, the air conditioner or whatever, so I didn't see it. So I have seen nothing of this game literally other than this screen and like the options menu <laughs> that's all I have seen so I have no idea what's gonna happen going into this I imagine it's going to have something to do with like dragons or like lizards something like that Bree's playing Fallout 4 in the background so if you hear her randomly speaking up or doing something like that we have a small I'm apartment yeah, she's she's probably in the wrong area doing something wrong, or that I'm kidding. It Fallout 4 has a tendency to just oh, you want to play? You want to play? <laughs> just out of nowhere. So that game has a bad temper. But anyway, so we're here to play this game. And we're gonna play this game without rambling on for too much longer. Let's play the fucking game. Start. System detecting user profile. Use a profile, not found. It's because I haven't played this fucking game yet. Plays under my name! Well, the last one... What was the last president we used? Uh, William Henry Harrison, we did William. Um, after that is John Tyler, we did Tyler. Um, James K. Polk, I believe we did Polk. Um, I don't remember what game Polk was. I remember uh, Millard Fillmore was the one who... Uh, we haven't, that would, next would be Franklin Pierce, I believe. I don't believe we've done, uh, Franklin or Pierce yet, so let's go with, which do you think is cooler, Franklin or Pierce? Uh, I like Pierce. Yeah, let's go with Pierce. Pierce! I before E, except after C. I was gonna make a joke, but I accidentally said it right. <laughs> Choose a color. Uh, out of these options, my favorite color is green, so I would go with green. User profile confirmed. Is this like a science-y game? I haven't played one that's been overly science-y, so this could be fun. Middle click? I don't have a middle click. Um, or H to hide the text window. It's a novel, so I don't know what the fuck. Uh, is this a visual novel? I don't know. I literally don't know what the fuck this game is. The year is 20XX. I believe that's when Mega Man happened, did it? Uh, the only recently has humanity discovered a portal that leads into a different world, populated with a race of intelligent talking dragons! I was one of the few to travel to this world. But maybe I should start at the beginning. It all began when we discovered a strange device in the middle of nowhere during one of the, our expeditions. A portal. Looks like... Looks like a conductor of sorts. I had heard about similar technology before, though that had been more on an experimental level. From what I knew, other portals had been created in the past and were under construction for mass application. As for this one in particular, though, we did not know who had built it, nor when, and or why we found it in the wilderness where we did. What was more exciting to us was the fact that it was functional. After our first tests, we found that there was something, someone else on the other side who was in possession of a similar portal, and our attempts at communication through letters were successful. But in the end, the machine's extraordinary demand for power meant we needed to act quickly, as we wouldn't be able to keep the portal open for much longer. When we made this known to the other side, we received a very unexpected reply, a letter of invitation. After some deliberation, it was decided to accept their hospitality and send a person to the other side. There was an individual who took the job almost immediately. That guy looks shady. I don't want a treat. Reza is cuerdo. He's cuerdo. He's cuerdo? Cuerdo? I don't know. I knew him, or rather I had known him. We attended at the same high school back then. 
even had a few classes together. We never really were very close friends, but we talked to each other occasionally and hung around the same crowd sometimes. However, we still went our separate ways in the end. I wasn't sure what to think about the whole thing, but he had to have known what he was doing. He certainly was brave. Either that or just very, very foolish. While I wasn't sure which, his courage was applauded by others. After all, he couldn't possibly have known who or what would await him on the other end of the portal. And if he did meet someone there, who knew what kind of intentions they might have. Not that any speculation on our part would have made a difference. When the day finally came, through he went, with applause echoing across the area, equipped only with the clothes he wore, his multi-tool, a gun, and a device on his wrist that acted as a PDA. Then we waited. The crowd that was applauding him slowly dispersed and the enthusiasm died down, as there was nothing left for us, nothing, nothing for us to do but wait and speculate. Approximately eight hours later, we received our first message from him. While we assumed the portal led to another in a different country, or maybe on a different continent, the reality turned out to be much more foreign. The situation he described to us was so outlandish that we initially took it as a joke. A very bad joke, maybe, with even worse timing and no punchline at all. It soon became clear to us, though, that we may just have made our one of our most important discoveries known since the dawn of mankind. Finding the portal had been remarkable in itself, but this took it to a completely different level. From what he described about the place, or more accurately, its inhabitants, we surmised it could not be part of Earth at all. We called them dragons, because according to Reza, that's what they were, or at least what they resembled most. Even though we found it hard to believe, it had been these dragons who sent us all the letters, and what Reza found on the other side of the portal was a whole civilization of them. They could talk, oh, write shit. books, had buildings and electricity. In many ways, their society was actually very similar to our own. So, who were they? And where was this place? Could they be aliens? Our speculation led us to conclude otherwise. After all, we knew about the existence of thousands of planets millions of light years away that may have theoretically been inhabitable. Yet... Even that, yet even then, we had never found conclusive proof in regards to actual alien life forms. Some people brought up quantum mechanics and parallel universes, but in the end, all of the all of this was just conjecture and an ultimately fruitless endeavor, since we neither had the means nor resources to explore these possibilities in greater detail. I think there's just one more thing worth mentioning before I move on: the previous isolation had been mutual. They hadn't known about any other intelligent life form beyond their own. Their portal had only recently been discovered a, and was a technology previously unknown to them. And just as we had myths about dragons, they had myths about us. That was what we knew about them so far, and as interesting as learning those things and debating their cultural significance was, we didn't really know what we should make of it all. Reza apparently was sure of what he was doing, though, and as he eventually let us know that they agreed on a trade. We, would, we were to give them a few of our PDA devices, which contained vast amounts of knowledge, dwarfing even that of encyclopedias. In return, they would supply us with generators. Overall, they didn't seem as technologically advanced as we had been, but they did surpass us in one aspect. Their means of generating energy seemed sustainable. Not only that, but evidently also quite efficient. We certainly would be able to put technology like that to good use, and trading mere past knowledge of the human race for something more tangible was a good call on his part. That is where I come in. My prior experience in both biology and sociology made me a good fit to deliver our PDA devices for the trade, and while in Dragon's World, Waiting for the prototypes of our generators to be manufactured by them, I would act as an ambassador on humanity's behalf. What a way to make a first impression by a display of mutual goodwill. Everyone benefits and everyone goes home happy. All is well. At least, that was the plan. Despite the images that living, talking dragons might conjure up in some people's minds, 
I didn't even think of bringing a weapon myself, considering that they were reportedly friendly and peaceful enough. There was no need for me to fear potential ill intentions like Reza did when he had stepped into unknown territory, and acting as humanity's ambassador, I had to do my best to uphold a high standard in fostering this diplomatic relationship. When the time came for me to step through the portal, all my mental preparedness vanished. My anxiousness was fueled by all the questions lurking in my head just as the machine started to do its work. Would it hurt? Who would I meet on the other side? What if they really weren't so friendly and just made Ryza write those letters with the pretense of appearing friendly, only to lure us into the den of man-eating monsters and certain doom with us ending up as nothing more than a tasty afternoon snack? Maybe I should have brought a weapon after all. Suddenly, I felt a shiver coursing through my whole body and then and beyond when I disintegrated as if every cell, every atom of my body was torn from me and pulled into a different direction. Cyberchase. I saw darkness and light, painting patterns in the stars as I traveled and images rapidly flashed before me as things unseen and unspoken. Both horrifying and beautiful, it was an experience unlike any other, yet over in just a split second. Then it was dark. I could only see a patch of lighter color constraining with its dark surroundings as my vision started to clear. Its edges got sharper as the patch of, of light slowly took shape, giving me the distinguished outline of a reptilian head and an array of horns sprouting from it. Oh my god, it's wearing a tie. Oh, that's awesome. Oh no, that's not a tie, that's just a shirt with an undershirt. It was a dragon! And as I could now see, a dragon who not only had a pair of round glasses, but also wore a burgundy tie around its neck. Oh, is that, is that a tie? I can't tell if that's a tie or not. Oh, it's a tie. <laughs> it looked like a shirt with an undershirt on it before. Whoosh! In the name of our people, I bid you welcome. If I may introduce myself, I am Remy, your guide and ambassador, a representative of our council. The dragon spoke! It was one thing to have heard and read about this, but something else entirely to have one standing in front of me in flesh and blood and tongue. It was good, uh, it was good that all my mental preparedness had disappeared when I was teleported, because nothing could have prepared me for this. Sorry, I imagine you might still feel the effects of teleportation. Drowsiness or weakness is not unusual, as is fainting and spontane spontaneous emptying of your bowels, bladder, and stomach. How do you feel? Well, I hope I didn't done shit myself, that's for damn sure! Rendered speechless, I had totally forgotten that I was shouldering the burden of representing my people to them as well. So much for being professional, but at least he gave me a good excuse for my blunder. I think I'm alright. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Maybe we should go before it gets too dark. Come with me, please. Or I should say, come with me, please. So it doesn't come sound... Come, 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 my lady. Be my butterfly. Sugar. Baby. baby. <laughs> so I followed the dragon, not straying too far from him, as the sun had already departed for the day, and, all, and the remaining light diminished by the minute. Oh, this looks spooky as shit. It is getting hard to see where I'm going. Sorry about that, but we had good reason to schedule your arrival like this. We did not want you to be ambushed by a crowd, so we had to keep your your exact time and day of and date of arrival a secret. Thanks. I suppose an event like this would make me a celebrity of sorts. It would be the same if one of you came to us. That's quite an understatement. Some people here are rather superstitious. They might regard you, or any of your kind, as divine, I suppose. Really? How so? We do have certain myths that involve humans, and as such, oh, I suppose a history lesson, the history lesson will have to wait for another time. Here we are. A lot of different backgrounds in this game. I really, I, I appreciate that. I mean, this is a finished game as opposed to all the prototypes and shit that I have been playing prototypes like they're a fucking engine or some shit all the in-progress games that I've been playing this one's finished 
By this point, it had gotten so dark that I could barely make out the building before us. I briefly wondered whether they might have streetlights elsewhere, or if they just did not require any due to possible enhanced eyesight or night vision. I could vaguely see the dragon, his light color still visible within the blackness that engulfed the area, rear up and manipulate the door handle with one of its forepaws. That's a door. That's the sound of a door. Ooh, my, my, what a nice-looking house. Hinges creaking, the door opened, and with a flick of the switch, the apartment was flooded with light, blinding me after all the time we had spent without it. This is where you'll be living for the time being. It is fully stocked, but in case you need anything else, I left you with a note and a few phone numbers. It is getting rather late, so I will have to take my leave now. In any case, someone will come and meet you tomorrow morning. Thank you, Remy. Have a good night. Until we meet again. And they leave. With a nod, Remy left the apartment, mindful enough to close the door behind himself. Surveying the room, I considered the events that had transpired as my gaze met the window. I could see the movements outside as I drew nearer. Startled, I could hear footsteps in the grass moving quickly away. Assuming it must have been the dragon I met, I thought nothing of it and went, went to bed and slowly succumbed to the sweet allure of sleep overdue. I spent a few moments thinking about my role, my mission, and what it meant to be here now. I felt a responsibility placed on my shoulders. I was eager for the adventure to come. Okay. Oh, 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 that's not narrative. That's choices. I felt the responsibility, or I was eager for the adventure. Well, both are nice. I felt the responsibility might seem a little burdenous. Being eager for the adventure is fun. I like fun. Fun is good. Fun is more important than serious, so fun! So many possibilities and prospects raced through my mind. Truth be told, the thought of being able to meet an entirely new species and civilization excited me, as I was going to be the one of the first to truly experience their society with its own little quirks, differences, and similarities. I couldn't help but feel some sort of modern-day Vasco, Vasco da Gama or Marco Polo. Maybe I would even write a book about this whole experience after it was all over. I was sure it would become a hit, all things considered. Or people wouldn't believe you. At any rate, this was going to be fun. That's what I like to hear. People going to have fun. Oh, shit. Oh, shit? Sorry, I just got surprised. Oh, my God. Chapter one. Oh, uh, does every chapter start like that? <laughs> Jesus. Inception. Oh, oh, it did a blah, and then the chapter is called Inception. What a f Fucking, fucking, fucky, fucky, quack, quack. I woke from uneasy dreams, uh, looking at an unfamiliar ceiling. Just for a moment, I wondered where I was, where I was, before the events of last night all came back to me. After a good stretch, I looked around the room, illuminated by the sunlight coming in from the window. Outside, in the distance, the portal I had emerged from proudly stood on the peak of a small hill. Getting ready, I noticed something lying on the table. It was a note. <sighs> oh, balls. It was the note Remy had left for me in case I needed anything. Along with his own home phone and work number, there was also some numbers for delivery of food and other necessities, as well as emergency and even janitorial services. He had certainly thought of everything, even though I now, I now had to wonder what a dragon plumber might look like. My musings were interrupted as the door when the doorbell rang. When I opened the door, I was met by another dragon. Oh shit, it's the fuzz! Not really the fuzz. Can you call something that is scaly the fuzz? Uh, <laughs> hello, you must be Pierce. I'm Sebastian. I'll be your escort, or s security, I, I suppose. Usually I work for the police, though. Nice to meet you. He seemed a lot smaller than Remy, and when he somewhat nervously extended his arm towards me, I noticed he apparently only walked on his hind legs, the two forelimbs, instead having distinct arms, hands, and fingers. Shake his hand! Kiss his hand? That's a little... <laughs> He's gonna eat me! Ha! <laughs> Shake his hand! When I took his hand into mine and shake it gently, I could feel the individual bumps and scales on his rough skin. Nice to meet you too, Sebastian. So where are you taking me? 
Straight to business, huh? Well, we are going to visit the plant where they're making their, our gen your generators. They have some good news for you, or so I've heard. Razor will be there, too. Sounds great! Just follow me. <laughs> While we no! walked... And I fell to my death. While we walked, I was under the impression we were purposely avoiding the busier parts of town, instead staying, straying towards the edges and small alleys as to not garner too much attention. Even then, we got to the occasional stare. We got the occasional stare. After just a couple minutes, we arrived at our destination. We were met by where we were met by Reza, as well as yet another dragon, a vicious-looking beast that didn't stay close to him. Oh Jesus! <laughs> Well, this is a fucking picture, isn't it? <laughs> hey, Raisin, long time no see. You're looking awful short. <laughs> Why does everyone look so short? How true that is. Good to finally see another human face around here. What a coincidence to have you, of all people, show up. Yeah, I guess those degrees aren't so useless after all. By the way, who's your friend? Just my bodyguard, same as yours. Don't bother with him, he doesn't talk much. Uh, just like you. I mean, I don't want to insult anyone, so I say, I bet he'd win in a fight with mine, though. Insult to Sebastian. He looks grumpy. Insult to big fuck dragon dude. So just like you, I'm fine insulting another human. Who gives a shit? We fight with each other all the time. Very funny. The two dragons exchanged a few words as I met the gaze of the larger, tenebrous dragon a few paces from us. Sebastian turned towards me and spoke up again. Hey, Pierce, uh, this is Maverick. Nice to meet you. Yeah, whatever. Just don't expect me to give you any special treatment like everyone else is and we'll be good. What are you talking about? So you're saying you haven't noticed the stares and how they all treat you like you're the next messiah or something? No, I just thought... We're not the ones making a big deal out of this. You are. We're just here to get what we agreed on, and then we'll be gone. If anything, I'd actually prefer if you left us alone. But you're the one who insists on following me around wherever I go. Oh, Jesus, why are you pissing off the dragon, man? <laughs> why are you... Why? Why the fuck? A growl escaped the darker dragon's trembling lips as he bared his teeth at Reza. All right, all right, that's quite enough. Well, let's all just all go inside already, shall we? After you. Jesus. If I'm not mistaken, that is a human on that uh, entrance sign. Or does that say female? Yeah, that's like a, that's a human female bathroom sign. <laughs> Way the hell down there? What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> the crisis was quickly averted as we entered the building, which was characterized by its many floors, high ceilings, and long, narrow hallways as Sebastian led us to our destination. There you are. I was waiting for you. Oh, who's this? Goggles Magoo. Why are we getting a long shot? Wait a minute. I, I thought we were going to meet the guys from production. Well, what are you doing here? They're only coming in later today, so you'll just have to make do with me. I see. Well, Pierce, this is Anna. She kind of manages the bis this building, though she actually she's more involved with the research wing rather than production and engineering. Nice to meet you. My pleasure. I have something for you, by the way. It'll take them a while to make all the generators we promised, so... But we've got one for you here. Feel free to send it home and give it a test. That's great, I'll take it. it. Looks a little small, if you ask me. Don't underestimate its power. Oh, and do be careful not to drop it. Sure, I'll be waiting outside while you do, while you do your thing, Pierce. Okay. Bye, dude. I, I suppose I'll wait for you outside as well. Okay, what thing? Oh, have you brought the PDA? Of course, here you go. Alright, now, to give this thing a test run. The PDA lit up as her hands swiftly moved uh, around its interface in calculated motions. By the way, would you consider letting me run some tests on you as well? It would only take a drop of your blood. What? Why? I work in biology, so obviously this kind of thing would be very interesting to us. I'd sure I'd share the t results with you, of course. 
Uh, sure, I guess. Oh shit, that was the wrong, that was the wrong, that was the wrong, I clicked the wrong thing. Great! She was quick to produce a small device from a drawer, which, from a glance, reminded me a lot of a test tube. Now, if you would give me a hand, please. As I reached out to her, she took my hand in hers before she pressed the device into the back of my hand. I winced as pain jolted through my hand, something sharp drove itself through my skin. Shortly afterwards, a droplet of blood was sucked into the tube attached to a small needle. Thanks. You're welcome. You gave Anna your blood! Your blood! I just got a blood drop. Looks like your PDA is good, by the way, so we're just about done here. And since we're both in biology, it could be interesting if you would uh, want to meet some other t meet some other time as well. Here's my number. All right. See you soon. The fuck? Oh, that was interesting. Did she ask you for blood too? Yeah. Did you give it to her? Yeah. <laughs> Should I not have? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> what am is I she gonna do with my blood? Am I gonna blow up now? What the hell? <laughs> Oh, well, it's your choice. We've got no idea what they might do with it, though. I'm getting hungry. How about some breakfast? I'm all for it. I can't stand early mornings like this. Well, that shouldn't be a problem. There's a cafe not far from here. What do you say, Mavers? I wouldn't mind going to get it by myself. Well, that settles it, then. The Uncle Mu Mugen? Uncle Mugens? Mudgeons, coffee, donuts, pasta, and burgers. Nice. Fuck yeah. That sounds like a nice arrangement. Please stop fucking around with the wires. <laughs> I think we're going to explore this diner and all its fine culinary delights in the next episode. I want to make sure that you can actually save. Ah, you can! Save at any moment. That is wonderful. It looks like Bach instead of back. Uh, Boom. Saved. Thank y'all very much for watching this first episode of Angels with Scaly Wings. On the next one, we will see what this cafe and the rest of this world has to offer. It's a very interesting looking game. Very science-y, very futuristic. I like it. It's very different than all the stuff I've done so far. It's very interesting, and I hope you all enjoy it. So, thank you for joining me for this episode. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I have been the Trained on Professional, speaking for the voices in my head and the squeak! When I say, until next time, fare thee well. I fucked up. I was supposed to do the new outro, which doesn't say, until next time, 700 times. It was supposed to be, I speak for the voices in my head and the squeak. When I say, fare thee well. That's what I'm supposed to say now. Bye, everyone. First episode, and I already fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs>